house to join our hearts and our spirits with God as we worship in this holy place. Last night was a wonderful evening here at Crossgates United Methodist with Guy Penrod in concert. It really turned into a revival meeting and how wonderful it was to feel the spirit moving throughout this place and to hear such a wonderful voice lead us in hymns of faith, lead us in songs that have transformed lives and will continue to do so. What a joy it was last evening, and to everyone who helped to bring that about, we say thank you. Guy Penrod and his crew were so appreciative of the hospitality they received here, and as they exited out late last evening, driving in toward Nashville, they said, we will remember this beautiful place and these beautiful people. So praise be to God for the joy that we shared together. On the back of your bulletin, you'll find the schedule of activities for this week, including this afternoon and this evening's activities. We encourage you to take a look at those, uh, schedule them into your calendar so that you will be able to participate in all that is going on here at the church. You have a lot of inserts in your bulletin this morning. Those will be explained to us here in just a little while. Two that we want to highlight at this point, however, are the yellow card. To be sure to sign up whether you are going to be able to attend Wednesday night meal or not. We encourage you to consider coming to that great time of Bible study that has increased in numbers over these last couple of weeks. Trey is leading that into a wonderful delving into the scriptures, delving into the entire book which is the Bible, the canon, and how all of the books relate to each other. We encourage you to take consideration in coming to be a part of that Bible study. But if you'll indicate on the yellow card that you wish to attend for the meal as well, it would be so appreciative as we prepare for this Wednesday evening. There is another insert in your bulletin that simply says UMCOR. This is the season of hurricanes. And we have seen that there have been disasters that have come through already. Dorian, recently the floods in Houston. UMCOR is our first response. And we need to respond. This is our opportunity. Throughout the rest of this month, we will be collecting funds for the benefit of those who have been affected by disasters. We encourage you to consider making your gift to UMCOR. We'll let them determine how best to use the funds, but it is the United Methodist arm of assistance during disasters. For this worship service this morning, we hear words that challenge us, but we also hear that there is one God. There is one mediator who is Christ Jesus, our Lord. And because of him, we are redeemed, we are restored to God, and he is worthy of our praise. In our order of worship this morning, we will participate in the sacrament of baptism. We will hear of a witness leading us into giving and giving from the heart, not because the church needs money, but because it is an act of sacrifice and praise and worship on our parts. We will not have a children's message this morning. The service is quite full, but we will have children's church. Parents, this is important, however. We are having Children's Church at Sunshine Island this morning. And so in the service where you see the children's message, we will ask our children to depart for Children's Church if they wish to do so, but they must be accompanied by a parent to Sunshine Island and to meet, uh, meet everyone over there. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Let us rise together as we share our faith, our belief in the one true God who is here and whom we worship. Let us rise as we sing our opening hymn of faith, hymn number 85.
faith together, brothers and sisters, as we turn to number 889, an affirmation taken from 1 Timothy, a lesson that we will hear later in the service. Let us affirm our faith. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. It is a good thing when we get to experience baptism. Baptism um, is first and foremost God's act. It's God's work. God does the baptizing. The water is the sign. It's the, the symbol, not only of cleansing, but of new covenant. But we as Methodists and we as a part of, part of the bigger connection of Christians around the world Understand that baptize, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is also critical. And what that looks like is what we're about to do. To initiate, to begin the process and journey with one very special little girl. But also for us to remember our baptism. Remember God's work in us. And if you would turn in your hymnal starting on page 39, because you're going to participate in this. Baptism is never done alone. It's always done as a part of the community of faith. And we will renew our vows together as well. We are going to make a commitment together with, the, with this beautiful family. But we're all in this together. So as those who are going to come forward to participate, if you all want to go ahead and start coming forward, join me now. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Who comes now seeking baptism by water and the Spirit? We present Lily Jane for baptism. So I ask you, Mom and Dad, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, Lindley's parents and grandparents and family, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and, and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you accept the... Sorry. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church and which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? This is why I love baptisms. <laughs> Will you nurture Lindley in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. I do. So congregation now, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ at Crossgates United Methodist Church, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Sorry, we're having fun worshiping God up here. <laughs> Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessed. Amen. This is water. You hold that for me. This is something special I was given. This is water from the Jordan, water in which your son has already been baptized. So we add this by faith into this water. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. I just want to hold her for a second. You are precious. Lindley Jane Sal, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. You don't have that. Through baptism, you are incorporated into the Holy Spirit, into God's new creation, and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. So congregation, I ask you, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries? 
by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope. You want to talk now too, don't you? I know it. That's okay. You're not the only one. And perfect them in love. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Could I more love? I stand here beside your bed as I pray. I lay my hand on your head and I say, May you grow up to serve him. Oh, Jesus comes knocking. May wisdom guide you when your mouth is talking. May discretion protect you and keep you pure. May you never stumble or fall for a lure. May your heart remain humble to the very end. May uprightness and truth be what you defend. May the world not ensnare or change who you are. May the light that's within you shine like the stars. May angels surround you, body, spirit, mind. 
May favor and peace be yours to find. May rejection and pain never reach you. May your spirit grow bold for what you're called to. As you rest in God's care, I will rest too, knowing that Jesus is watching over you. Amen. I heard that. You know what they said? She needs a choir robe. <laughs> We are in a season of, and I'll let Cheryl compose herself over there. <laughs> we are in a season, always in a season of confirmation, of baptism, but also consecration. And who we are as a people, and, and what do we do with our time, our treasure, our talent? You remember, we just said that. So Cheryl, um, come forward now and share with this church what it is that we're getting ourselves into. So, my name is Cheryl Sanders, and I am part of the stewardship uh, program that's going on right now, and it's year two of three, and we are excited. What I love about this program is that it doesn't focus on give your money because we've got to pay the church bills. It focuses on your spiritual growth and your giving. As you just committed to, your tithe, your presence, your talents, your prayers, your service, and all of you. So um, that's what we want to do. Part of this season, we ask that you grow. You grow somehow, whether it's your financial giving, whether it's your physical giving in the ministries of the church, we want you to grow. And at the end, if you remember last season, we have a big party at the end. Um, last year, Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers came. They're not going to be back this year. However, there will be lots of other entertainments. So we want you to save the date of October the 13th. One of those cards you got was a blue, blue card. It's a reservation card that says, hey, I'm coming. We're going to cater a meal after this 1030 service. We're going to go to the back. We're, you're going to eat. It's a cater meal at no cost. Mom, you don't even have to worry about cooking that day. If grandmother's visiting, if somebody's over, add that number to the card. Bring them on. We just want them to come. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be only a 1030 service. There's going to be casual wear. If you have a church t-shirt, wear it that day because it is party time on the 13th. So please save that day because we're just going to have a great time to culminate this season of right now our stewardship program. What I want to um, kind of reiterate again is this is a, this is a time of growth and, um, and talking about stewardship. Of course, I have a prop. And talking about stewardship, um, that is like within the ministries of the church. That's what you're a part of. And you have a little puzzle there. You have to figure out what the ministries are, and that's just that's not even all of them. But there are so many things that you, the members of the church, are good stewards of, the ministries that you give. First of all, you give your money. And I'm part of the finance committee, so I do appreciate that. I'm for a little more for that one. The staff are here. They lead our worship. The choir is here. Thank you for the music. They give right there, so I'm going to pour a little more. Somebody prepares communion on communion Sundays. We have acolytes. We have greeters. We have ushers. We're going to keep pouring for those. We have the audiovisual guys that come in, and they if you miss a Sunday, or if you say, did Trey really say that? You can always go back and look and see. They're there for us. Um, we have those biscuits that you ate. Somebody cook for those, and I think we need a few more on that team, by the way. If you come on Wednesday night, somebody's going to serve you, and best of all, they're going to clean up your mess. <laughs> then we have um, those also on Wednesday nights. They feed the shut-ins that can't get out. Not only those people, we have the ground crew people that mow the lawn and keep it up. They volunteer out in that hot sun all summer. We have um, volunteers in the office that help Vicki when she's out or when there's a lot to do, like during this consecration time. We have the youth, and speaking of the youth, they have lots of fun projects coming up. I think they're going to need a little bit more giving, so if anybody has any extra, I'm going to pour in for that one. Just see Cam. Um, people of the children, work with the children, and we have that saying, we won't believe all they say about you if you don't believe all they say about us. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, no. Okay, we have those yellow cards on the back. If you write a prayer request, somebody's going to come up here and pray for you or whatever you put on those yellow cards. And they're going to take, they're going to be your prayer partner. We do have the new prayer ministry. We have somebody that has sent you a birthday card, probably if you're a member of this church, and her birthday is today, you'll probably hear. We have the UMW that has their own ministry. So we have the United Methodist Men 
that have their own ministries. It is the giving of you as good stewards to this church. And with that, we have other ministries. We pay the staff because they want to get paid. We have the lights d turned on and the air conditioning running really well today on a hot day. But not only that, we have like Vacation Bible School where we teach your little ones about Jesus during the summer. We have backpack ministries where somebody bags the bags and they put in those bags canned goods and they give them to our local schools to kids who go home hungry. Well, they have a couple of meals on the weekend. We have that ministry. We have the scouts. Somebody works with the scouts and is our, our coordinator with them. We've adopted a soldier. We've adopted an angel. We have children that we, we work with, the Methodist Children's Home. The Children's Center next door, we work with them. We have um, Trinity Methodist, or Tr Trinity Mission, um, our Hispanic sister church. We have a benevolence ministry in which people that call our church and say, hey, I just need a little bit. That benevolence ministry is for them. We have ladies that come here and make pillowcases for people that are in Blairy Batson. All of these ministries, all of these ministries are because you are good stewards of our church. And I want you to understand, and I, I believe I can speak for the leadership, that we as stewards of our church, we try to be good stewards through the church council, finance committee, all of this, the staff, trustees, whatever is given to the church, we work really hard at being good stewards of what is given. So my question to you, as we ponder what's given to the church in all the ways that we can return to the church, even through baptism. My question is to you, are you being a good steward of all that God has given to you? I ask you during this season to grow. Grow with us, whether it's financially, whether it's physically involved in one of the ministries, whether it's just prayerfully. During this season, grow. And I'll see you October the 13th. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes to us as Paul's letter to his friend Timothy. And in this portion of his letter, he is encouraging Timothy in the act of prayer. Hear Paul's words to Timothy, but hear them as Paul's encouragement to all Christians. First of all, then I urge the supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgivings should be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. A teacher of the Gentiles in the faith and truth. May God add his blessings to the reading and hearing, understanding and living out of his holy word. I urge you, therefore, in supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, these should be made for everyone. The conversation with God is available to all of us. All we have to do is turn to him and to speak in truth and honesty. We are at that point in our service this morning as we confess together. And as Trey has reminded us time and time again, confession is not a time in which we should be weighted and feel the guilt 
of burden or sin. It is a time that we get to lift those chains, those burdens, and be restored. So let us go into a time of confession together. God of salvation, turn us toward your love and justice and true worship. Forgive our sins, for which you weep. Forgive our hesitation. Grant us courage to choose you and to serve you and you alone. We speak the truth. And when we make this confession, to speak the truth to God and to hear God's truth to us, and we speak the truth to one another and to hear the truth back from one another, we hear this underlying truth of our faith that we need to be reminded of every week, if not every day, that when we confess our sins, He is, Jesus is, faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So receive that. Receive that forgiveness and hear these words of assurance. The God of our salvation, the God who weeps for us and for our world, desires everyone to be saved. Christ Jesus, a human like us, gave himself as a ransom for all through the love of the one God and the one mediator, we are forgiven. So go now for a moment, find someone and pronounce their peace to them. Say to them, may the peace of Christ be with you and let your response be and also with you. Go, let's do that right now. This is a good time for children who wish to go now to Children's Church. It's good to see children running out of here. No, I should, I should never say that. I love it when the kids are here. I just know that sometimes they look at me and go, Daddy, what's he talking about? <laughs> we enter into a time, uh, a season, or maybe I should say it this way. We remain in a season of prayer, a time of prayer. In baptism, we are called together to remember our waters. Whether we were baptized as a child and led into confirmation later, whether we were baptized later in life upon a profession of faith, God does the work, and the Holy Spirit is poured out like water over all of us. And in that unity of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Prayer is not something that we do by ourselves. Prayer is something that we do together because we experience life together. And this week, we've experienced the highest of joys with baptism. But we have also experienced some losses in our church. And there are people who are experiencing pain and sorrow. Um, for those of you who are not aware, um, Anne Bryant passed away um, yesterday morning. Um, she died peacefully, but I'm going to miss her. But you know, death is never a sign of God's abandonment. We have others who've experienced loss in this church. Carolyn Jones uh, lost her sister-in-law. There were some other prayer requests this morning in the early service about one of our church members whose friend passed away. We have uh, Debbie and Wesley James lost their son earlier this week. 
What do we say during times like that? You know what we say? (sighs) That's what we say. And we call back to the reminder that these groanings on the inside are not ours alone. They are the Holy Spirit that's been poured out in us, who, who groans within us. For what purpose? To keep us connected to God. So we can pray and we can celebrate. We can remember Tom Pace and Joel Mason. We can remember the friends and family of Jay Shouse, For Jerry and the family of Ken Socher. For Benton Nail, for Adam and Molly and Selah Hope, for Marie, and for Fred Engel. We can lay these here knowing that God is already there. So that in the midst of loss and and sorrow and grief, we can also do something worth celebrating. Joey mentioned it a little bit. How many of y'all have ever received a birthday card from May Gary? Okay, today is her birthday, and we sang happy birthday to her in the early service, so we're not going to sing it again today, this morning, but what I would want y'all to do is remember that that's the work of the Holy Spirit, quickens and gives life to people who can say, I can at least write a birthday card, and remember that that's the way that God works, one gift, one person, one opportunity faithfully responding. So as we pray together now, remember we pray in honesty and integrity, in deep love and joy and in deep sorrow and grief. They all exist together because we are all united in the Holy Spirit who moans and groans and utters unspeakable things on our behalf to God. So let us now pray together. Our Father in heaven, your children come to you with deep, deep joy and deep, deep sorrow. We come confused and we come clear, but we come. We come to you because we want to and because we need to and because we have to. We come in celebration of baptism and Lindley. We come to celebrate a generation, another generation, and another generation passing down the faith, seeing your Holy Spirit do what your Holy Spirit does, transform people. Father, call us to your side. Keep bringing us home. Keep bringing us back. Keep bringing us into worship in which you are the center so that we can praise you and glorify you. Because you love us, and you care for us, and you call us back, and you call us back, and you are faithful all the way to the end. It is in that joy and in that sorrow, it is in that grief and in that love, we know we can come to you. When we come after confession, and we come in honesty, and we come again. Oh, Father, when we have no other words to say, we know that we can at least say the words that your Son taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers are coming forward, we continue praying. We continue in our connection to God. Remember what we've been hearing over and over again. We don't give because God needs it. We don't give because the church needs it. We give because we are being transformed in the image of God. And what we see most clearly in God is one who gives his only son. 
that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And we give then as a unified whole people. So let's give now with joy in our hearts. Let us remain standing as we hear the gospel read. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 16. Jesus also said to the disciples, Now a certain rich man that had a household manager found out that he was wasting his estate. He called the manager in and he said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give me a report of your administration because you can no longer serve as my manager. The household manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is firing me as his manager? I am not strong enough to dig and I'm too proud to beg. I know. I know what I'll do so that when I'm removed from my management position, people will welcome me into their homes. One by one, the manager sent for each person who owed his master money. And he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, 900 gallons of olive oil. The manager said to him, take your contract, sit down quickly, and write 450 gallons. Then the manager said to another, how much do you owe? He said, 1,000 bushels of wheat. 
He said, quickly, take your contract and write 800 bushels. The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted cleverly. People who belong to this world are more clever in dealing with their peers than are people who belong to the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to make friends for yourselves so that when it's gone, you will be welcomed into eternal homes. Whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much. And the one who is dishonest with little is also dishonest with much. If you haven't been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you haven't been faithful with someone else's property, who will give you your own? No household servant can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be loyal to one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. So seriously, do you want me to be dishonest, Jesus? Is that what it is that what it's saying? Do you want me to be dishonest? Are you commending a guy who stole? And you want me to be like him? And you want me to use money now to buy people off? Is that what you're saying, Jesus? No. That's not what he's saying. On Wednesday nights, we're studying how to read Scripture. And we've been spending the last two weeks, and we'll probably spend another couple of weeks, talking about words like plot and character. We're looking at how the Scripture was put together over thousands of years, different authors, different times. But the key word that we're, that we're looking at is context. Context. Always ask what the context is here. So I bring us back to, re, to, back to where we were last week. Do you remember when we were talking about tax collectors and sinners and about how Jesus had them gather around them, but then the Pharisees and the legal experts showed up and they got grumbly and mad and said, who is this man that he invites these sinners and tax collectors here? So then Jesus taught a parable about the one sheep and going to find it and leaving the 99 behind, or the woman who lost one silver coin and swept the house until she found it. Well, after that is the story of the prodigal son. And in there, we hear about squandering, squandering wealth, squandering inheritance. But we hear about God's grace and God's restoration after confession and returning and the father running to grab his son and welcome him and the older son not ready to welcome his own brother back because of God's grace. And now we get into this parable and Jesus, what in the world are you talking about? What's hard to see in the scriptures or especially the English version is this. Sometimes Jesus sticks his tongue in his cheek when he talks. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of like, mm-hmm. Or he gets sarcastic, but we don't hear it. So here's this, this picture where, again, the Pharisees Jesus was talking to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this side over here as the Pharisees. I don't want to pick on our families and our guests. Y'all aren't the Pharisees. Y'all are the Pharisees over here, if you don't mind being Pharisees for a moment. So you have Pharisees who are all getting grumbly and mad because Jesus is pointing out some things about them. And Jesus knows that they're still there, but the scriptures say that Jesus now turned to his disciples. And he looked at them, and he sticks his tongue in his cheek, and he says this. There was a certain rich man, and he had this steward that took care of everything, and someone ratted him out and told him that he was squandering his wealth. There's the word squandering again, prodigal son, squandering. He called the manager in and he said, I know what you're doing. You're fixing to get fired. Now, write up your statement of account so I know what's going on. Well, in today's human resources world, I'd have fired somebody long before that. I don't want anybody who's been stealing from me to come back in and get the books ready. I'd just like to point that out. That's 
in that story, something's wrong here, David. I, I don't think bankers would do it that way either, but you know. <laughs> so Jesus is telling this parable with his tongue in his cheek, knowing the Pharisees are over here, but there's something in this story we have to draw out. A very important part of this story is interest. You see, you know that Jewish leaders and Jewish people, it was forbidden. No way around it. You cannot charge interest to your brothers or sisters who are Jewish. You cannot. You don't. You won't. It's impossible. You can't. Are y'all getting what I'm saying here? You don't charge them interest. You just don't. Well, apparently, the Pharisees and the legal scholars the religiously righteous people, you know what they were doing? They were finding every way they could to not do what the gospel, sorry, what the law required of them. What the steward here, the household manager, was doing, interestingly, is this. One by one, that manager sat down each person who owed his master money, and he said, how much do you owe? 900 gallons it is. Okay, I want you to make it 450. What's really going on here is that the steward is ripping off the cover of what's going on. He was settling the accounts of what they actually owed, not the inflation, not the interest that they were being backdoored into. See, if someone was coming and saying, I want to borrow 450 gallons of olive oil, what would they say to them? Okay. I'm going to bill you for 900 They didn't say, I'm going to apply a massive APR with certain percentage points and deductions. So what the steward was going in here and saying is, I need to make sure that I have a place to live, a place to land. What can I do? How can I make sure I'm taken care of? How do I win friends and influence people? I know what I'll do. I'll strip off the interest. I'll strip off the way we've been hiding this. I'll ask them simply to repay what it is that I, I, I had them borrow. And so he, did, he does this with these two and others. So the master shows up and the master commends the dishonest manager. And he commends him because he acted cleverly. And another, another, another sarcastic phrase that's in there is this, wait, if I were to call him out, Joey, if I were to call him out, if I were to call out my steward, he just gave me a settling of accounts, then I'm going to disclose that I've been charging people interest. I can't do it. What am I going to do? How do I get out of this? The manager is saying, I'm caught up in this thing too. Hi, Joey, you did, you did a great job. You're so clever. I don't want to get in trouble. This is what this steward did. He was so clever. He knew exactly what to do to make sure that he would land well in a world that would no longer give him a job. So he did people a favor, and they invited him into his household. That's the story that Jesus told. He told it because the Pharisees were listening on, but he told it to his disciples, his people of light. He told them, and he said, why is it that the people of this age, the people of this world, know how to use their money and are clever in the way they deal with their people than to the people of light. Why is it that those who know the kingdom of God, why is it that we don't know how to use wealth? Why is it that we don't know how to be good stewards? Why is it that we don't know how to be clever like that? I tell you, Use your worldly wealth to make friends for yourself so that when it's gone, you will be welcomed into eternal homes. Jesus then makes the switch. The balance twists all the way over the other side. He is not saying, let money use you. He already gave us the anti-hero. He gave us the bad guy who did the good thing. And he's saying, don't even be like that. But look how wise and crafty this guy is. You're in the light. You belong to God. This is God's kingdom. What are you doing with all those resources? Money, time, talent, prayer. What are you doing with it? Are you investing them? Are you eliminating people's interests? Are you forgiving their sins? Are you welcoming them into fellowship? 
so that when the time comes when you're ready to be welcomed into a heavenly home, that you'll be welcomed. Now, is, is this parable saying, is Jesus saying, buy your way into the kingdom? Everybody do this with me. No, he is not saying that. But what he's saying is, if you, if you know how to use the wealth of this world to get what the world can offer you, why is it that you don't use the wealth that God has given you? Your time, your talent, your treasure, your purpose, everything about you. And then he finally explains what he's talking about. Because whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much. And the one who's dishonest with little is going to be dishonest with much. And you see, if you haven't been faithful with worldly wealth, who's going to trust you with true riches? If you're going to let money run you over, if you're going to let money make you into an unsavory character where you find a way to backdoor interest people, when you find a way to manipulate them, when you find a way to turn people into things and things into people, why would you be trusted with something as important as God's household? Because if you haven't been faithful to someone else's property, who will give you your own Someone else's property there is now talking about God's kingdom. If you can't be faithful with someone else's property that God has given you, who will give you your own? And this is what Jesus is talking about, calling us back into a right understanding. Because either he said either you'll hate the one or love the other. You can't be loyal to one and have contempt for the other. You can't serve God and wealth. You can't do it. And that's the calling of the life of a follower of Jesus. It's not a following that says you get to bifurcate and separate. I'm going to do my worldly stuff over here and do what I need to do to make it work. And then I'm going to come over here and sing my songs and do my thing. You're either going to be a good steward here and a good steward here, or you're going to be a bad steward here and you're going to be a bad steward here. You can't serve God and money. Trey, why in the world are you talking that way when we just had Cheryl's consecration message? Because we just said it in our vows at baptism. Kramer, this moment was not just for a dad to hold a child. It was a moment for an entire church to join y'all, all of y'all in renewing a commitment, a commitment that we make to give our time, our treasure, our talent, everything that we are, our prayer, everything that we are, to, to, to turn it into what God is doing. So is God wanting us to be dishonest? No, of course not. He wants us to be shrewd like that, though. He wants us to be as savvy as the Pharisees were with finding a way to manipulate something to get the maximum out of it. He's saying to us, if you're in the light, why can't you do that too? Why can't you maximize everything that you're doing to invest into something wonderful so that when it's time for you to go home, when it's time for you to get into a household, that people are going to be there and say, yes, 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 and you're bringing in tow 500 people with you because you have invested yourself in a shrewd, amazing way of taking someone else's wealth and turning into something wonderful, taking God's wealth, God's resources, God's talents, God's everything, and turning it into something amazing. And that is what we hear in this text today. Not that God wants us to be dishonest, but that God wants us to surrender all. God wants us to take everything and surrender it in this amazingly prodigal way. Overwhelming, overwhelming trust in God. In the bulletin, there is a song that we have mentioned. And I, I told Joey, I said, we're going to sing a different song, if that's okay. So we're actually going to sing our hymn of response is, I Surrender All. It's hymn number 354. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verses of this as our response to what we've heard. But here are these questions as we prepare to sing. What is our attitude towards wealth, and how do we use it? Are we ready to face an account when God says, I heard something, can you tell me more? 
And are we investing in relationships that matter to Jesus? Or are we investing in things? Is it people? Is it people that matter to us? Let's go be crafty. Let's go be savvy. Let's take everything that God's given us and let's go and set them free and welcome them into heavenly homes. That's our message. So let that be our response of surrender to that, surrender to Jesus Christ. Let us stand now and let us sing. If there's anyone who feels the need to come and pray at the altar, know that you're always welcome to come and pray. But let us stand and sing, I surrender all. It's time to go, but it's time to remember. These waters are still here. If any of you would like to come and dip your hand and remember God's covenant with you, God does not give up. God still cleans and washes, and God still welcomes and invites. These waters are here for you just to remember that God ain't done yet, and God can be trusted to complete what He began. So go now. Go into a world that needs to hear the truth that they're investing in the wrong thing. They're investing in things that God is ready to invest in them. To go with a message of hope. Go with a message of truth. And go with a message that you're ready to set them free in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Let's go.